so not to get too much into the weeds of, of kind of evolutionary theory, but um, I, to me, I, there's a, um, the insight of natural selection and its power. I see the kind of the, um, there being another insight you can have, which is that the, the life process, the kind of homeostasis or acting in a way as so as to survive is the thing that kind of is the, is the engine of evolution. So you have what's been called a kind of homeodynamics or just behaving in a way in, that's, that kind of propagates your, your existence as an organism that that's the kind of statistical feature of the world that that brings life into existence and then powers evolution um and in that and so evolution would just be another way of propagating yourself or you know your species your your form um and so for me i think in that picture suffering and existing as a kind of conscious being a, a the the striving is what brings you into existence so it's not that th this relates to what you were saying about a creature that just was perfectly happy and just you know if a, if a creature if, if a single-celled organism was came into existence and was immediately enlightened it would dissolve it wouldn't eat any food you know it wouldn't so so kind of craving at the individual level moment by moment i think is is can be understood as an absolutely fundamental aspect of of existence for us as conscious organisms um, and so it's not, you know, if, if we were all were enlightened, I think it would be game over. So I think there's, it's interesting to notice that where we're, we're wedged in between these two, these two things. Yeah, I mean, I should say, and maybe we should say a little bit about what enlightenment is in, 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 in Buddhism. I, I mean, I should say that there are people who think um, that there are enlightened beings in the world. Uh, there are people who think that they are among the enlightened beings. And, and, and I've talked to people who have really, you know, not a bad claim to it. I mean, they've clearly, something has happened and they're clearly on kind of a different level from me in terms of their relationship to, to uh, craving and, and, and lots of things. And, 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 and they, they profess to have kind of abandoned the sense of self in a certain sense. Um, and they would say, look, you don't die. You, you, you still manage to eat and, and, um, but but leaving that aside, I mean, I, th I think your view, the, the view implicit in what you said is also defensible, which is that, wait, if you were truly enlightened, truly let go of um, of all yearnings, wouldn't you just cease to do anything? That would seem to be a logical consequence. But anyway, you know, by enlightenment, we mean, um, I mean, the term, a more literal translation of the, of the term in the original um, Pali or Sanskrit would be something like awakening, but in the West, uh, enlightenment has come to be used and that's, that has something to be said for it. Um, but anyway, the idea is as you, as you suggest that you let go of craving and it isn't, it isn't just, in the Buddhist worldview, if you really let go of craving in, at all levels, at a, 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 you know, like obvious, like I want to eat a donut craving and, oh, it feels good to believe this craving, kind of craving. And it feels good to think that that person thinks this about me, you know, um, all, if you let go of all forms of craving, then you would see the world with perfect clarity. And there's an argument to be made that that really all the illusions we're prone to, and we are prone to lots of them, are, uh, you know, are intertwined with kind of wanting things to be a certain way, wanting them to be a little different than they are. If you just let go of that, you would have a much clearer view of the world, which I, I, I'm a firm believer in. I think that's true. Yeah. It's I hard think, to do, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this, um, you're, you're right to raise this idea of where, um, what would we consider enlightened in in this sense and um yeah i think i think w the way i was using it is is to say that there's almost two extremes or a continuum a continuum from being very deluded very identified very stuck in suffering at one end and at the other end a state of perfect um release from any of that which i don't i suspect no organisms ever achieved that i don't think it's probably possible because they would probably stop breathing and you know um but mm -hmm. there are people like, now this is in a Hindu context, but Ramana Maharshi, who was a kind of you know, 20th century Indian saint who had this kind of awakening experience. And then um, he had to be kind of, he didn't speak for years and would had to be tended to by people because he kind of wouldn't eat and move and just, you know, got like bodily problems. Cause he, you know, I, I see him as someone who, who probably went way over, <laughs> was an outlier on this continuum closer to 
what you might call you know full-on extreme enlightenment um and that's the kind of i guess that's what i'm pointing to is if we all suddenly collapsed over onto that side um it would be game over that's that's kind of what i mean but you're right i think that there's another way of understanding it which yeah. is you can still be a functional human but you've kind of got it you, you're not living in the delusion anymore and by that standard there could be a lot of people out there right who, who kind of get the insight and, and a related question is you know if you were enlightened wouldn't you lose all desire to improve the world yeah and and this and i think it's out of this question that, that there arises the tradition in mahayana buddhism of the bodhisattva which is somebody right. who they kind of get to the brink of enlightenment it you know and it can be theirs and i don't even know if they're t technically supposed to have crossed it but the point is they choose to remain in the world and do good and make the world a better place um rather than just bask in the bliss of enlightenment yeah and i think the bodhisattva yeah. i'm glad you raised that i think that's really um if i could uh yeah have a prescription for what we should all be aiming for if everyone on earth was aiming for that i think that's the to me it's a nice balance because it's you might say, well, surely everyone should just be enlightened and take this kind of God's eye perspective. But, you know, we are embodied here. Like we are these creatures, these evolved creatures. And I think instead of aggressively trying to deny that, accepting that we do have these evolved instincts for compassion and, and you know, empathy towards each other and living from that place seems like a, seems like a wise way to go.